In the previous video, we began to talk about scrimmage plays in the EFHL. And we've covered at length now the proper procedure for the huddle, the setup, audibles and shifts, the snap, the read, the scramble if necessary, and now we're ready to execute a play. And there are several choices to be made for the play itself. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, running with the ball or run plays. And that's broken down into two different options the quarterback has. He can either keep the ball himself and attempt a run play, or he can hand off the ball. Now at this step, the play has begun. We've already gone through the uh, snap, the read, and the scramble. All players, all unblocked players have been pivoted. So now it's time to execute the play. If the quarterback's going to hold on to the ball, it's just as simple as now turning on the uh, uh, switch until reaching the line of scrimmage, at which point the, the board would pause. But we'll get to that in a moment. For our purposes, let's just go ahead and uh, attempt our handoff. Now, in order to hand off to uh, a running back, uh, number one, uh, he must be behind the quarterback in the EFHL. And number two, he must be within one vertical base length or base width no base length from the quarterback. In this case, he clearly is. Uh, I'll use this to measure that. You know, he's well within range to uh, accept a handoff. In the EFHL, a handoff is automatic, like in most other leagues. However, there's no. It's not a guaranteed success. There is a chance of failure. We facilitate that by rolling two six-sided dice on every handoff. If the result is three through twelve, the handoff is clean, and it's executed correctly. Uh, just barely. However, if on this check it, we roll snake eyes, the uh, handoff is said to have been botched or muffed, and uh, that is technically a fumble because a handoff is uh, considered a backward pass, at which point we would follow uh, uh, EFHL fumble procedures and uh, go from there. But that did not happen. It was a clean pass. And so at this point, now that the, the player has already been pivoted, we would simply uh, turn on the board, and you know I'm going to assume that I actually, uh, during the pivot, turned his dial, so he's going to execute a, a sweet curve here. If the runner, whether it's the running back or the quarterback himself, makes it to the line of scrimmage without being tackled, which in this case he is, then the offense would turn off the switch, at which point this is the juke move. We talked about this during kickoffs as well. Except kickoffs, the, the line is always the 20-yard line, barring penalties. On a scrimmage play, it's the line of scrimmage, at which point play is paused. The runner only, or the ball carrier only, pivots. Like so. And now the defense gains control of the switch. The defense turns on the switch and turns it off at any time afterwards, even a split second later at which point all unblocked players except for the ball carrier may be pivoted. Now the purpose for that is the, is the split second of uncertainty that occurs when a runner makes his juke move. That split second of recalibration of everyone on the field to compensate. That's what you're getting there with that defensive uh, stoppage. And now once all unblocked players have been pivoted to either attempt to get to the uh, run, uh, ball carrier and tackle him or uh, supply blocking for the ball carrier as he uh, attempts to go downfield. Then the defense turns on the board until the play is resolved by either a tackle or a touchdown or running out of bounds or uh, a lack of forward progress if the runner gets into a cluster, which typically what happens here at the line of scrimmage in electric football. Unless you do a good job with your offense and opening seams for the uh, uh, runners to thread through. Uh, or if, the, if there's a, a potential fumble. Consult the uh, EFHL rules to see all the different scenarios that could happen to resolve a play. But once the play is resolved and the uh, ball is spotted, you know, take your yard markers and indicate where that ball should be spotted, like so. Should have been doing this all along. I apologize, I haven't at which point you would proceed to the next play, you know, just repeat it all again, go back to the huddle, the setup, audibles and shifts, the snap, 
the read, optional scramble, execute the play, and technically the read also is optional. But that's the flow of play, and you just saw uh, uh, a running play in theory. Now let's try to build one. And once we get into it, there should be enough time to show you all the uh, unblocked pivots as well. But I'm going to go ahead and pause while I, uh, you know, we're in the huddle now, so I'm going to go ahead and do the setup off camera. Here's the offense setup. I just went ahead and flipped the quarterback around. He's going to go backfield. And uh, I have the uh, running back on a stationary base here. He's probably going to be the one who accepts the handoff, and this guy's going to serve as a lead blocker. I've also gone ahead and put the safeties and the corner and the uh, inside linebackers on stationary bases. By the way, in the previous video, I accidentally called these gentlemen cornerbacks. These are safeties in the backfield. The last line of defense for uh, uh, either pass or run plays. And I also failed to really uh, mention the cornerbacks. They always line up uh, opposite their assigned wide receiver, like so. All right. So um, set, set. We're only going to do one little uh, pivot here, just a tiny pivot here for an audible. No shifts for this time on the defense. Here's the snap. Okay. Going to do all unblocked pivots. Um, Pittsburgh gets the inside seam and the inside route here. Uh, well, looks like they got it here as well. This cornerback is... About to go out of bounds is what he's about to do. Okay. Now, like I said, I want this to serve as a lead blocker, so I'm going to try to thread through there. The entire line has a... Uh... Hmm. Actually, I don't know if I can do that. I'm definitely going to... Plug up this linebacker. Well... Anyway, let's move on to the read. Okay. Yep. We'll be all right with that. Let's see. Honestly, I just want to see how this develops a little more. Um, at this point, looks like only the tight end may pivot. There's not much call for it. That gap there is looking pretty good, in my opinion. Just going to go ahead and call a scramble now after a slight pivot from the quarterback here. Remember, this uh, receiver, this uh, running back, is still on a stationary base. So here's the scramble. It's going to be a very short scramble, though. There. That was actually probably unnecessary. I could have still executed the handoff. But at this point, I'm going to do a couple things. Um, I'm just going to go ahead for demonstration purposes leave these guys on their stationary bases. You'd be crazy to do so. It's t These guys should have already moved up. But we're definitely going to take the running back off his base now. And normally, you should use the map magnet markers to make sure you put him exactly where he's supposed to be. But since I'm in sort of a hurry, although I shouldn't be, i got plenty of time for this. It's incumbent for the quarterback to get out of the way. And uh, you're hoping that this uh, running back is going to thread through here and get the inside seam through this gap. I don't know if that's going to happen. It probably won't. Like I said, the running game in electric football is terribly difficult. Unless you turn the dial hard left and pull something like this, in which case it's actually pretty sweet. But now we're declaring that the quarterback is executing a handoff. That's not a guarantee. We need to do the handoff check to make absolutely certain that it's not a fumble. And I roll a four. It's a clean handoff. At this point... We uh, simply uh, execute the play. The line of scrimmage is the 45-yard line. Um, remember, if he crosses or if he touches the line of scrimmage, the play stops, and the ball carrier only may perform his juke move, at which point the defense takes over uh, power, control of the board, so to speak. So here we go. Let's see what develops. Ah, well, he did make it to the 45-yard line, but then he was subsequently tackled by number 79 on the Bears. You notice there was a moment there where he was behind his own defender, not really getting anywhere, but then, you know, things happened here, and he managed to uh, squeeze in, but was then immediately tackled. So that's a run play, guys. Again, the quarterback could have held onto the ball himself, turned his dial to the hard left, 
and executed something like this, at which point, you know, it would have been really smart for the safeties and the uh, linebackers to go off their bases and, and get ready to uh, anticipate that and hopefully tackle him to prevent a touchdown or big yardage. Had the quarterback made it to the uh, line of scrimmage, the board would have stopped. He would have pivoted. Defense would have taken control of the switch. Let's just play it out. Let's just see what happens. All unblocked players may pivot, but not the ball carrier. Perhaps the Steelers player could uh, could make something happen, some sort of block, although it's, it's not looking good. Uh, it looks like there's going to be a massive amount of coverage on him. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, now... This isn't smart because this Bears uh, cornerback is aimed right at the quarterback. When he reaches this point, the quarterback will be long gone. It's smarter to point around, around there like so. All right. So this is just a scenario. This didn't happen, but let's say the quarterback kept the ball, and now he's going to try to get see if he can achieve a first down here. Let's see. Nope. Brought down, I was thinking about the 41-yard line. So, it's going to be second down, second and four. And at which point we go into the next play, going into the huddle, repeat it all again. So that's run plays. Basically, either the quarterback or a running back runs with the ball. Uh, don't forget to uh, execute the uh, 2D6 roll for the handoff check. And just keep in mind, if the... Uh, uh, running back is more than one uh, base length away from the uh, quarterback. You can't execute a handoff. In this case, you would need to do a pitch out, and I think that's what we'll cover next. Pitch outs and lateral plays work exactly like a run play, except for the uh, manner in which you uh, get the ball to him. It's still a 2d6 check, and... Once that check is made, if it's a clean pitch, you do it exactly the same way. The only difference, of course, is that the quarterback does not do a pitch out to himself. Well, for that matter, he doesn't do a handoff to himself, but, you know, a quarterback keeper, which is a design play, that doesn't really apply. If the quarterback holds onto the ball and runs, it's the same procedure as handing off to a running back, with the exception of that handoff. I hope that made sense. But we'll go ahead and... Uh, set up a, a pitch out play next time. In fact, I might actually skip the read and just go straight to the pitch out. But let me know if you have any questions. Again, you can contact me at electricfootballhero at gmail.com. And thanks for watching. Have a good night.